Let's stay with this very subject and speak to the South African Depression and Anxiety Group Operations Director, Casey Chambers. Casey, of course, lots to talk about tonight, but I'm keen to hear your reaction to what we just saw. Good evening, and thanks for having me. I think it's so devastating when we hear these kinds of stories, because these are our young people, our future generation. It's the basis of why SADAG does what we do is because there are such young people who are feeling like no one is listening to them. They're not taking their cases of bullying seriously. Um, people are taking videos and sharing it rather than intervening and providing support. And in this situation, I mean, we've just learned about the story and, and some of these details. It's it's terrifying. And I think that there's so many learners who are in similar situations where you have them reporting it, they followed the procedures, they're reaching out to the people that are supposed to be helping them, and they didn't get the help. And the consequence of that is that they take their own life when it could have been avoided and prevented. So this is the kind of thing we have to shed light on to show the seriousness of taking every single threat or mention or issue seriously. And we have to do so much more as a society um, for our young people. And looking at the fact that, I mean, SADC starting some 30 years ago and here you are today, um, really just adding your voice in this fight and, and, and really just making sure that a number of people who need help are able to be able to get help. But would you say that mm. over the course of time, because it was seen to be taboo at some point to talk about mm. such issues, has that picture changed? It definitely has. You know, when we look back at SADAG celebrating 30 years of making mental health matter, when we first started 30 years ago, people didn't talk about depression. Um, it was things that only happened behind closed doors. Communities didn't talk about it. And I think we've come leaps and bounds in creating awareness, giving language to ways that we're feeling or struggling with. And I think when we're looking at the impact from what we're even seeing on a daily basis with getting up to 3,000 calls every single day from people around the country, we know that we're making the impact. But then when we see stories like that, it really says we have to do so much more. We have to reach every person who doesn't know yet about SADAG or doesn't know where to go to get help. So I think so much has changed with regards to mental health and even October being Mental Health Awareness Month, I'm very encouraged to see so many companies and schools and government departments saying, yes, mental health matters. But now we need to take it to the next level. And the SADAG, for 30 years, we've been advocating we need to invest in mental health. We need to make sure our schools have better programs, our communities have better programs. So even though we've hit this milestone, and as any NGO in the South African climate, to reach 30 years is a huge achievement. But our work is cut out for us for the next 30 years. And how would you describe, um, you know, this 30 years from an operational point of view? Because we are seeing some NGOs also buckling under the pressure, for example, mm. financially. But others are simply not able to, you know, even keep, um, you know, their premises. Others mm. disintegrate for different reasons. Oh, it's so tough being an NGO in South Africa. And I, you know, I've been with the organization for over 18 years. Our, our founder who started from her dining room table um, and not as a mental health professional or an expert, but as someone with lived experience who said, I want to do more and I want to do better. And from that premise and that heart over 30 years, we've really been working hard at it. And there have been some years that I can be honest where we were counting month to month. How are we going to make it? How are we going to pay our phone bill? And there's been many moments where we thought we're not going to be able to keep doing this. We're in a very privileged position to be able to be where we are, to be able to say we're celebrating 30 years as any NGO, especially mental health, where it's so hard to get sponsors and funders. And we've worked really hard and really looking at making our funding and our system sustainable. And a lot of that is not relied on government funding. You know, we don't get any funding from the National Department of Health. So a lot of what we have to do is self-fundraising. And we rely on amazing individuals who donate and companies and corporates. And without them, we wouldn't be here. But it's been tough and it's been hard. And it's something that even us on an operational perspective, it's top of our agenda because we have phone bills. Our phone bills are 150,000 rand a month. So we have to constantly look on how we're gonna pay our bills because we know that with every call, we're able to save a life. Mm. So we have to do whatever we can to keep going. But for a lot of NGOs, it's been really hard to watch them really struggle and battle. And there's been amazing organizations who, due to lack of funding, have had to close their doors. And 
that also motivates us to do so much more to make sure that we're not in that position. And I suppose, um, you know, when you look at the position you are in right now and the journey over time, people are now mm. buckling under pressure, um, even privately, mm. uh, with their own situations. You think about, um, you know, the cost of living, you think about some of yeah. them having to lose relatives to COVID-19 in 2020, mm. and where they are right now, some are still, you know, don't even have jobs. And I suppose when you look at the journey that you've traveled, as well it also makes it all worth it because ultimately at the end of the day you're able as you say to save a life exactly you know on a daily basis we are motivated by people who call in and say I'm alive because you sent me to a hospital or you helped my loved one so that kind of feedback that we get really helps us to get going every day because we know that people need that help so it, it is incredibly hard and we've really had to diversify our funding and it's changed so much you know, our founder, Zane Wilson, started as a businessman and looked at running SADAG as how do we look for funds? What's happening overseas? So we've really had to try to be smart about bringing in money because the more money we can bring in, we can set up support groups in rural areas. We can train up traditional healers and nurses. So every single cent we get gets reinvested into the communities. But it is tough. You know, NGOs are struggling, companies are struggling, their corporate social responsibility budgets are getting smaller. So it is really tough. Um, and I think, again, what keeps us going is we have an amazing team and amazing volunteers who give up their time to help other people. And we've had companies who've been with us at AG for 30 years. Um, and it's because of that that we're in that position. But it's, it's hard work. Yeah, I can imagine. And we, we speak as matriculants have sat for, mm. for their final exams and that comes with a whole lot of pressures and not only pressures for them, but pressures from parents as well. Let's talk about your advice to them and their families. Exactly. This week has been a big week. It's the start of the final exams. We know that parents are under pressure. Learners are feeling pressure, not only just from family and parents themselves, but also from schools and teachers and communities. The whole country is looking at our matric. So you can imagine how much pressure and how many eyes they have on them. I think what we're looking at is what the next couple of weeks. Um, and this is a small chasm in their journey. And I think what we're trying to share with Matrix is that this is one step in their journey. Put your head down, focus on one step at a time, making sure to look after themselves. And I think for parents, connect, talk, ask. You know, this is a mark on a piece of paper. Their child's life is so much more important and there's so many different options as well. So whatever does happen, there are always options. So for us, it's really just knowing that they're not alone. SADAG has various resources from our free helpline to our support groups. They don't have to deal with this pressure um, all by themselves. And finally then, if someone is watching, what's the number? They can call us toll free on 0800 567 567 or SMS us on 31393. And you can also go find all of our information, which is free and accessible on our website at sadag.org and across all of our social media. Casey, yes, to 30 more years. Well done. Um, and thank you so much for chatting to us this evening. Appreciate it. That was the South African Depression and Anxiety Group Operations Director, Casey Chambers.